This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features HK Model's gigantic Lancaster, Tamiya's new Sheridan, a bunch of new books, and Bandai's new old Millennium Falcon. The new product rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard to find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. And by Cult TV Man's Hobby Shop, the place to go for science fiction and fantasy kits, details, masks, decals, and more. Welcome to the final new product rundown of 2018. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. Now, rather than going out with a whimper, we thought we'd go out by looking at a couple of the most highly anticipated kits of the year, starting with HK Models 132nd scale Lancaster. As you can sense by the size of the box, this is going to be a large model. When finished, it'll be more than two feet long with a wingspan of three feet and two and a quarter inches. The Lancaster was one of the Royal Air Force's heavy bombers of World War II, and the versatile airframe was adapted to carry both the Tall Boy and Grand Slam bombs, as well as the bouncing Dam Buster ordnance. The massive fuselage is divided into the area forward of the wing and the rest of the airframe. Surface detail includes fine rivets, a few recessed panel lines, and a couple of raised panels. Inside, the walls are detailed with molded stringers and frames. Notably, these areas are free of ejector pin marks, and the sprue attachments are molded on the joining surfaces rather than the body itself. This limited edition release includes a second complete set of the fuselage parts molded in clear plastic to display the interior detail. And there's plenty of that, including a cockpit with multi-part pilot seat, instrument panels for the pilot and engineer, control wheel and pedals, radio and navigation equipment and seats for those crew members that all mounts on a large floor, that in turn sits on part of the bomb bay. The rest of the bomb bay comprises more roof, walls, 18 500 pound bombs, and a 4,000 pound cookie, and doors, with separate actuators that fit into bulkheads. Back in the crew areas and behind the cockpit, there are humps for the wing spar carry throughs, a box fairing for the tailplane spar, a crew rest bunk, ammo boxes, and tracks for the ammunition for the tail turret. Each of the turrets, including the nose, dorsal, and tail are nicely detailed with controls, guns, supports, and seats. The clear parts for the turrets, cockpit, and windows look great. Crystal clear with distinctive framing that should make masking easy. Interestingly, it includes the fairing for the H2S radar, although that part isn't called for here. The wings are a nifty bit of engineering. Most of each are molded as a single part joined along the leading edge. There's a mold seam to deal with, but no awkward filling. Separate slide molded tips do the same thing there, and an insert for the wing root sets the shape and has a locking slide that should leave the wings removable for transportation. The ailerons have separate rounded front parts that fit into trailing edge inserts. The flaps are also posable and fit into detailed bays in the wings with actuators. Similarly, the rudders and elevators are posable. Surface detail looks great. Each of the four Merlins is complete with blocks, sumps, exhaust and intake manifolds, crankcases, and more. Two styles of propeller blade are given, but only the pointy ones are called for in this kit. Complex framing anchors each engine in its nacelle with multi-part cowlings. The landing gear bays in the inboard nacelles include wing spar detail inside with the ceiling, bulkheads, and frames. The complex landing gear comes with several heavy parts with large weighted wheels. A small photo etched brass fret supplies belts for the crew seats, gun turret details, and a few more items. Cartograph decals provide common stencils and insignia as well as markings for three individual Mark I aircraft, all with nose art, including two Royal Australian Air Force bombers, one of which is the well-known S for Sugar. Outstanding. HK Models big scale kits are always impressive, but based on the quality of the moldings and the engineering in this one, I'd say it's their best yet. Can't wait to see it built. Next, here's Tamiya's 135th scale M551 Sheridan. This is an all new kit for Tamiya, which has had a kit of the US airborne tank in its catalog since the early 1970s. This kit represents the vehicle as it was used in Vietnam. Typical of Tamiya, the dark green parts are beautifully molded with fine rivets and panel lines, as well as fuel fillers and engine grills. The lower hull's belly, front, rear, and side panels show similar molded detail. The kit includes additional armor for the forward belly, a common field modification for Vietnam service. The rest of the hull includes sponson plates, the glasses plate, and the upper rear panel. The driver's position up front includes an interior part with something like a seat, and a movable two-part hatch. The driver's vision blocks, as well as those for the commander's cupola, headlights, and spotlight lens are supplied in clear plastic. The running gear comprises road wheel arms, shock absorbers, road wheels, idlers and drive sprockets, and link and length tracks. 
The two-part turret with weld seams includes a one-piece barrel with molded rifling that fits into a mantlet and rear section. A metal shaft, plastic cylinders, and poly caps allow the gun to hold its elevation. The loader's hatch and commander's cupola complete the top. The latter includes a mount for a 50 caliber machine gun, an optional covered or uncovered spotlight can be mounted beside the gun, a bustle rack goes on the back. Other parts specific to the Vietnam version are an ACAB gun shield for the commander's position, a bracket for a wire mesh screen, and smoke launchers. Three crew figures are included, a driver, commander, and loader with nice poses to fit their various hatches. Decals provide markings for two U.S. Army Vietnam Sheridans, one from the 25th Infantry Division and the other from the 11th Cav. If you want extra detail, Tamiya has a set that includes a turn metal barrel with photo etched metal screens for the engine grills and the bow mesh. This looks like another nice kit from Tamiya with everything in the box for a nice display. Here are a few books we liked and thought you might appreciate. From MMP, here's a detailed look at the Republic F-105 Thunder Chief. One of MMP's yellow series, this monograph describes the fighter bomber's development through the first production variant, the B, as well as the D and F variants, with extensive chapters on the aircraft in operation, including one about Vietnam, and a section of technical details. The 184-page volume includes hundreds of photos, color profiles, and 172nd scale plans. If you're looking to build an F-105, this book provides a wealth of info. Also from MMP is a spotlight on the Grumman F-14 Tomcat. This slim 42-page hardcover isn't a detailed monograph, but it has dozens of beautifully rendered profiles of Tomcats in a variety of markings from different time periods, including several Iranian fighters and combat veterans from Desert Storm, Iraq, and Afghanistan that provide plenty of inspiration for Tomcat modelers. From Kagera, we have a couple of terrific naval references. First is a super drawings book about the Russian battleship Marat, recently kitted by Zvezda, and second, a super drawings monograph on Type 21 U-boats. If you haven't seen Kagero's 3D super drawings books, you need to check them out. They feature beautiful renderings of the subject vessels, broken into sections, with lots of detail outside and in. It doesn't get much better for ship modelers. For aircraft modelers, there are Kagero's top drawing books, including this one, Volume 1, about the HE-111. There's not a lot of text here, with most of the 20-page softcover book filled with crisp black and white drawings of each version of the Liftwaffe bomber, including a breakdown of differences between variants, which is perfect for modelers. This one covers variants from A0 to P4. It also includes masks for the canopies and 148 scale Luftwaffe insignia. For armor fans, MMP has the green series of monographs, including this one about the T-3485, covering camouflage and markings after World War II. Filled with photos and profiles, this 112-page volume shows just how widespread use of the Soviet World War tank was long after the war in Europe, Africa, the Middle East, Asia, and Cuba. The last section details the modernizations done during post-war manufacture in different countries. Great stuff for modelers. Finally, here's a great book about the B-47 Stratojet, Strategic Air Command's Transitional Bomber. This 320-page hardcover book covers the history of the beautiful Stratojet from design and development to deployment, and reconnaissance variants and missions, with detailed appendices of the production series, attritions and retirements, and record setters. This is a great book about one of my favorite airplanes. Any of these would be great references and interesting reads. Finally, here's Bandai's 1 to 144 scale Millennium Falcon, as used by Lando Calrissian in Solo, a Star Wars story. I enjoyed this movie a lot, and I've been looking forward to this kit since it was announced. Although it kind of looks like Han's hot rod from Star Wars, this cleaner, more streamlined look is just different enough to be cool. The main body halves show fine panel details and fewer cutouts and openings than the later versions. While the landing gear bays and entrance hatch are separate, this kit is designed to be built gear up. There are detailed inserts for the sections between the halves, docking rings, sensor dish, and engines with a clear blue insert. Inside the cockpit extension is a detailed flight deck with seats and molded controls on the panels and back wall. In addition to the detailed gun base with molded instructions and seat is a single heavy laser cannon top and bottom. Other interior details include the ship's main crew room, including the holographic Dejaric table and the bar. The kit includes a separate auxiliary ship stored between the mandibles with upper and lower halves, sides, and engines. It can be stowed in the fuselage or be mounted on a separate stand. Optional water slide decals and stickers provide panels and stencils for the exterior as well as panels and floors inside. This looks like a fun detailed build. Look for full build reviews of the Lancaster and Sheridan and upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. 
And you can always find morning product information in the February issue on sale in early January and at our website, findscale.com. And if you like to keep up with what's happening within our hobby, listen to our favorite podcast, On the Bench. This Australian show drops a new episode every two weeks with lots of information about new products, tips and techniques, and conversations about the hobby. Join the fun by following the links on our website and on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I think we're alone now. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be anyone around. And the upper rear panel. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I've been, I, I was trying to get through that line before that happened. I apologize. I'm, bone. I'm just impressed. <laughs> just impressed. <laughs>